Hello and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged, this time coming from Tallinn in Estonia, an amazing country. If you get the chance, do come and see it. We've been brought here by the European Investment Bank, which is fantastic that we've had this opportunity and we're coming to see a company that are creating ultra capacitors, but they're doing it in a country that really has a most remarkable history of tech startups, of tech innovation and creativity, starting from a really low starting point at the end of the Soviet era in the early 1990s, they've become one of the leading tech countries in the world. Where was Skype invented? It was invented in Estonia. I've come here to find out what ultra capacitors are, and I'm really hoping I'm kind of roughly in the right place. So Tabby, first of all, thank you so much for uh, ha inviting us to come and see what you're doing here. It, it, it's very impressive. But what I really want to do is get back to the sort of super basics. Uh, uh, ultra capacitors 101 for the, the complete novice. If you look at ultra capacitors, when they are fast energy storage components, whereas batteries are slow energy storage components. Because if you take ultra capacitor, when it takes two to three seconds to fully recharge ultra capacitor, Secondly, all the capacitors have one million deep charge discharge cycles. We all know that uh, if you look at Tesla batteries, for example, the graphite NMC, what Panasonic manufactures, it has about 3,000 to 5,000 cycles. So that's you charge it, then you drain it, then you, yes. it. you can do that about three to 5,000 times. Yes, and with all the capacitors, you can do it one million times. One million times. <laughs> and we, we have done it in real life, even over one million cycles. Wow. And, and now the, the key thing is that all the capacitors are not the silver bullet no. because the total energy content in all the capacitors is smaller than in batteries, meaning that you can get the energy in really quickly, like breaking energy. And this is a perfect application because you don't break for one hour. Your breaking cycle lasts usually about five seconds yeah. and the same goes for acceleration. Now, if you look at uh, all the capacitors, when they are actually not usually competing against batteries. But what is more widely used in the industry is the combination. Because now you have this peak power device, ultra capacitors, you recuperate the braking energy, you use it for acceleration, but you can downsize the battery back because you don't need to oversize that for the maximum power. And we have seen that in terms of initial cost, this leads to over 10% reduction in cost. Secondly, the higher efficiency because you take the peak loads with ultra capacitors. And thirdly, and perhaps more importantly, you can increase the battery life by up to two times. Because what kills the battery lifetime is this type of high peak powers and overheating. And all the capacitors takes that away. But if you look at the technology roadmap with all the capacitors, when we see that five to seven years from now, almost all new vehicles will have a lithium ion battery pack for long range driving and all the capacitor pack for fast charging mm -hmm. and, and fast charging when you can get in few tens of seconds the initial 50 kilometers of range. Because if you take away that the last great entry barrier of fast charging, when we are not only addressing uh, passenger vehicle market, but uh, for example, if you look at buses, trucks, yeah. even industrial equipment. Two weeks ago, I was in Paris. And if you go to Champs-Élysées, when actually you have buses which have ultra capacitors on board and also ultra capacitors in the charging station. And this is already happening in real life. Wow. If you go to China, to Shanghai, you, you already have this type of systems on the road. But uh, in our case, what was really important in terms of scaling was uh, uh, also the push, the policy push for European Investment Bank, because we, we, we had raised already a significant amount of private capital and the fact that we could leverage that with uh, EIB support allowed us to start two factories right. in Estonia and Germany, 
increase the headcount and more importantly uh, increase our impact in terms of revenues, in terms of customers signed. Because now one of the things that I'm fascinated by, having heard a lot about it but yeah. not being sure what it is, is graphene. Because that, it, because you're, so yeah. you're using curve, is that right? Curved cr graphene materials. Is that the description for it? Exactly. Right. And and now uh, if you look at our material, it's a graphene composite material. And that allows us actually to achieve the price advantage. We, are, we have developed a composite material which can be scaled and where we have already proved today. And I think most importantly, we have happy customers right. who see that this technology from performance perspective, but also from the value perspective, gives them the extra advantage or extra boost what they need. When I look at the energy consumption in my Tesla, so you get that graph which shows you, you know, that you're accelerating, you're slowing down, etc. And if you could chop the top of that peak off by, by the fact that it was an ultra capacitor that had taken the power from braking and used it to accelerate, you can then see, oh, that, I would go further on one charge, as it were, because of that. Because that takes a huge chunk out of the, the battery's capacity yeah. as it is now. Yeah, ex exactly. And, and uh, we, we can always uh, make a good comparison if you talk about all the capacitors. But if, if you look at uh, batteries like lithium-ion, then uh, they are like uh, famous marathon runners, so, so more fair. Right. But they run for two hours, they have really good stamina, yeah. uh, really good uh, technology. Now, all the capacitors, uh, they are like uh, Usain Bolt. Right. Uh, we, we have the peak power for in 10 seconds, nobody in the world can beat us. Yes. But when, when you ask Usain Paul to start running a marathon, uh, he will be not so happy about yes. it. And, and neither are all the capacitors. Right. So, so we are essentially uh, complementary technologies. Then what, so what this is, these, these strips will then be yeah. cut and then rolled up yeah. and that's what's inside the, yes. the, the, the so, battery so, so, the, so the magic is actually on top of this uh, foil. Right. So, so that's, that's, the, that's the curved graphene. And, and the key there is, is in electrode packaging, the key is that uh, you have to have the best density, but you can't press it together too hard because otherwise you lose the surface area. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's always a balancing act that uh, uh, you have to apply force but you also have to be gentle about it. Right, yeah. right. So at this stage then, the, the material that we saw being cut there is now being rolled. I'm getting it now. It's really, it's lovely to watch this machine, it's beautiful. So that's combining the two layers together, rolling them up into yeah. the, the this, shape of the... This, this takes the curved graphene electrode and plus and minus is separated with our proprietary separator right. and, and basically this forms the electrochemical package which later on is then packaged into a cell and, and go, go, goes through the vacuum environment. Right. Yeah. Right. We, we take the electrochemical package, uh, when we, we press it together, uh, we make the necessary fixture and actually very precise laser welding process is going on there. Because so that's what, what's happening inside yeah, there, right? Yeah. And, and what is critical here is uh, that uh, laser welding has to be as strong as possible, right. but at the same time, you need to make sure that you don't weld through the electrochemical package. So uh, from, from quality perspective, we have invested in, uh, uh, let's say, best in class equipment. Right. And, and I think that the investment has paid off. And after this, uh, we go into a vacuum environment. So deep vacuum, high uh, temperatures, because the natural enemy of all the capacitors is water and you have to get all the humidity out from all the uh, materials yeah from, so from if all they're the just in this room they've got yes. humidity in them effectively. yes yeah so so basically here here we have a I, I, and now it's I a deep vacuum environment and what why, why do, you, do you do you see these boxes is it's uh, the the pumping in order to get that deep vacuum right so uh, and that's inside this yeah. this cabinet right? yes and, and basically when the cabinet is moved to the filling station where we, we uh, add the electrolyte right. and uh, after we have added the electrolyte it goes to final welding so we as you see we, we have actually three different welding steps but this is to, to, to be on the safe side but everything is as reliable as it can get right 
But then the, these, so these standard size modules, yeah. that's really the only size you make. I mean, that's we, we, we actually make uh, five different sizes. So oh, you this do. Is there are different, we, different sizes. This is the best seller. Right. Uh, for some customers, uh, like for space products, we make even very specific uh, products. Right. Same goes to motorsports industry. But, uh, but this, this goes into, uh, for example, buses, trucks, but also grid and renewables, right. uh, windmills, uh, industrial equipment, port cranes. And the base point, it's a universal component. And now right. the difference comes in uh, on the module level. So then you, when you pack yeah, them on, on you a pack can... level. 10 kilometers from here, we have one of the largest container terminals in the Baltic Sea. And uh, in the container terminal, we have achieved 30% fuel savings wow. because uh, while lowering the containers, uh, the gravity is doing the work for yeah. you. And you can take the energy and reuse it uh, for lifting. So that's one way all the capacitors help. Right. So what are we seeing here? So this is, this is some of those, those which uh, go modules on buses. in a pack. And this yeah. is what goes in a bus? Yes. Right. This is a bus ultra capacitor. Yeah. Oh my God! Because <laughs> I had no idea what was going yeah. to happen. So yeah. that is an enormous amount of electricity yeah. going through those wires, yeah. Yeah. causing an electromagnetic yes. repulsion, effectively. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's it. That is amazing. Can you give, give me an idea of how much power was coming out of there at that point then? You, you, you can uh, take up to 100 kilowatts from this pack uh, with a weight 100 of... 100 uh, kilowatts. Yeah, wow. with a weight of, of about 10 kilograms. Right. Wow. And so, yeah, so to give that, to put that in perspective for like a bat battery you'd have in an electric yeah. car, to get 100 kilowatts from lithium ion batteries, you'd need something a lot bigger than that box. You, you would uh, need something uh, which is at the minimum, even with the highest power batteries, 10 times larger than this. Right. Yeah. So Tabby, this, this, has got, this is a big black box yeah. with skeleton technologies written on it. What's inside? <laughs> inside we, we have all the capacitors that we start with that type of welded packs. So it's the same as those, the ones we saw being constructed? Yeah, that's the same building block. Right. And now here what we have done, we have built a full IT system and a full system solution. And out of this cabinet, we can take out the peak power of 1.5 megawatts. If you Wait would 1.5 megawatts from that size, because yeah. I'm, st I'm still trapped in lithium ion battery land where yeah. 1.5 megawatts would be huge. Yeah, we, with, with 1 point megawatts with lithium ion batteries, we would be talking about uh, the full container. Yeah. So, so we, we always say that we are not in the kilowatt hour business. No. That's, that's for batteries, but we are in the megawatt second business. Right. So you're going to have the smallest uh, footprint and the lowest cost per megawatt second. Right. And, and I think the innovation what we have brought to the market here is not the only the component performance, but the fact it's, it's the first in-kind full plug-and-play solution. Right. And if you look at this uh, specific product here, when this actually goes to Isle of Egg, we are off Scotland. Wow. Scotland, yeah. And, and the Isle of Egg, as, as we know, was one of the first uh, islands to go fully renewable energy. Oh, yeah. uh, what's the issue there is that we did not uh, think so much about the peak power requirements because the, the, the power loads are not uh, static. And wow. now all the capacitors will be used to smooth out these peaks because at the moment uh, the, the islanders are experiencing at least brownout situations. Right. So do you have uh, better power quality? All the capacitors are best to do the job. And, and I think that Isle of Egg actually gives us a uh, uh, good indication what's to come in UK, but yeah. wider in Europe, because we are now on renewable energy. Yeah. And, and basically as the testing ground, we see that, okay, it's not only about long-term energy storage, but it's really this type of transient power when you move from uh, one power source to the other one, and where all the capacitors basically fill the, fill the gap. Yeah. And, yeah. and what we see is that uh, similar type of solutions, uh, whether it's island grids or even in mainland UK, will be quite widespread in the next five years. Right. So then this is, 
another application then. I'm, I'm getting for a vehicle. Is that, is that, is that we, what this, this goes we, into? This goes, uh, this goes into a vehicle and actually this is the building block for the kinetic energy recuperation system. But in uh, city delivery trucks we have achieved 30% reduction in the fuel bill right. by recuperating the energy to the other capacitor pack and reusing that while accelerating. Right. And now this uh, module, as you can see, it's really rugged. You can run a tank over it. Right. <laughs> you don't have to do it, no. but, but you can run So it's that solid, because it does look... Yes. Yes, it's not wobbly. It's yeah. very solid. Wow. At the fall of the Soviet Empire in 1991, Estonia gained its independence. Less than half of the residents of this amazing country had a, something you could call a telephone line. They could only talk to each other, they couldn't talk outside the country. The only person who had a, a link by telephone to the outside world was the Estonian foreign minister who'd kept a, a Finnish mobile phone hidden in his garden. There was one phone. And what happened next was Finland said, look, we're going to update our, our phone network to a digital phone network. Do you want our old analogue phone system? You know, they were going to give it, donate it to the people of Estonia. The people of Estonia said, no thanks, we don't want some rubbish old tech, we'll go the whole hog. So they just literally jumped. They now have the fastest broadband connection, the cheapest, the most ubiquitous broadband in the whole of Europe. They have an amazing tech startup scene. There are more startups per head of the population in Estonia than anywhere else in Europe. It really is a remarkable country that has done amazing things. I had vaguely heard that Skype wasn't invented in in uh, California or Seattle or somewhere, it was invented in Estonia. This is where Skype was first founded, where they first started. They were sort of way ahead of everybody else in their technological capabilities. And that's, a lot of it must be down to the Estonian education system, the very heavily science-based. And even though we're in this old part of the city of Tallinn, which is very beautiful, lots of tourists come here in the summer, um, you know, it is, the whole, the, the rest of the country is very, very, up to date in terms of how they pay tax. They have a flat tax rate and you can fill in your tax form online on your tablet or your phone in about two minutes. I've been told this by so many people here. You have a digital identity. You don't have a passport. You have a, a special series of numbers, a digital, digital code that you're given when you're born. And that is your official state identity. So they've, they've just kind of jumped, they've jumped ahead to such a, remar a remarkable degree. They're way ahead of the rest of us, it's amazing. It's embarrassing, really, for everyone else. I've still got a paper passport, so 20th century. Then, in the year 2000, the Estonian government declared that internet access was a basic human right, just the same as food and shelter and protection under the law. I mean, they're the first country in the world to do that. And they now vote online, you pay your taxes online, you have a digital signature that is legally acceptable. Uh, you have your own unique identifying code, uh, you, you know, it's uh, they're amazing and they have done a deal with Finland at the moment, that's the only country they do with, you can go to Finland if you're uh, an Estonian and you, all your medical records are available there, you have a digital identity in Estonia, uh, as long as you're looking where the traffic's coming, but there we go. They're very nice drivers actually in Estonia, they don't try and run you over if you're walking down the middle of the street, they're very tolerant. I mean the thing that uh, when we were coming into land, at the airport, I saw a, a big wind farm on the coast, but that is the only one so far. So they're very, uh, very aware that their infrastructure is still, as you can see all around me, still fairly ancient. Their physical infrastructure, they haven't really modernised that. It's not an ideal country for solar because they're very far north. You know, it's mid-April mid now and it's about five degrees. <laughs> I just heard that one day in June a couple of years ago, in the middle of summer, it was four degrees. So it's not, it's not what you call a hot and sunny country. Very hard, long winters. It's a, it's a Scandinavian country, effectively. So, uh, you know, it is the most remarkable place. So if you get the chance to come, I would really uh, say do it, because it's an amazing place to visit. Um, really lovely people. They all speak English, of course, because they're all incredibly well educated. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, you know, an amazing place to come, but it, is, uh, it has been a real joy to come here and see. We've just seen one startup company, there are thousands, and what they're doing is, is amazing and is, you know, potentially world-changing. So, um, you know, really exciting place. Anyway, that's just a little 
a little Estonia, a bit of Estonian history for you. There's loads more. Uh, you know, if you're interested, you can find out a lot more because there's loads more things I haven't told you about. Incredible history they have. Anyway, that's enough. So, thank you very much. Uh, you know, please do subscribe to Fully Charged. Have a look at the Patreon link. And of course, as always, if you have been, thank you for watching.